All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone. This is a session where we're going to be speaking about a couple topics that are nowadays very important, um, LinkedIn and networking. So like I said before, we will speak about those topics. And then at the end, if you have some questions, you can put them in the chat and um, Paul and I will um, address them at the end. There we go. Okay, so topics covered today. We are going to discuss obviously LinkedIn, um, but LinkedIn versus your resume, kind of what's the difference? What are the best practices and just some general tips about both? And then the big topic of networking, um, you know, why is it important? And then, you know, how do we go about something like networking? Because some people are really good at it and other people, it's not their thing. So we're going to try and give you some ideas and some tips surrounding networking. So starting out, LinkedIn is not your resume. It's different, obviously. Um, you know, LinkedIn is kind of like a modern resume, right? Um, an old resume is just very basic. Um, one piece of paper, maybe a couple pieces. And it's designed, a resume is designed just to grab your attention and get you to want to speak with that person and learn more. Whereas LinkedIn is like your resume on steroids. It's very dynamic. You're constantly adding to it. People can see it immediately. All your professional accomplishments, you know, who you are as an individual is much more able to be highlighted. Um, what you would like to accomplish. And so there's just a whole lot more. It's much more dynamic. But that being said, they're both important. You know, some students will say, well, which is more important, the resume or LinkedIn? And I always say, well, both, because you don't know what that potential employer wants to look at first or what's more important to them or how they're going to find you. So they, they complement each other. They're both very important. Now, along the lines of LinkedIn specifically, one thing that we know is that having a photo dramatically increases your odds of somebody wanting to you know, reach out to you, connect with you, or investigate more about your, your profile. So the photo doesn't have to be some elaborate, professional, great photo. It can simply be you putting on a nice outfit, taking a photo from roughly the chest up, kind of a headshot, standing against a blank wall and having a friend pick up your cell phone for you and take a bunch of photos and see, you know, is there one that's gonna be good? So it does not have to be professional, that's, that's plenty. Now, that being said, we don't want a selfie because selfies just look different and definitely not a selfie in a car because LinkedIn is, is a professional, um, it's a professional entity. So you want to appear professional, even if you're not getting a professional headshot. So make sure that the photo is up to date. It looks like you wear something that is professional. And again, just a blank background um, is really best. Nothing that's too distracting. So we also want to look at generating a good headline. So succinctly showcasing your specialty or your value. Uh, many of you are obviously UTD students. So being able to put that in there and say, you know, I'm an undergrad student of such and such or computer science or master's in. So you can put that type of information there. Um, you can also put something down about, you know, com maybe computer science expert or, or expert coder, whatever it might be, the, the headline is up to you, How whatever you want to say about yourself. Um, you want to speak directly to the audience that you know, you're trying to attract. So it might involve using keywords, which might be your major. Um, you can also try and be creative or inspiring. And see, the biggest thing to me with that is if you're unsure what to put, just simply going out on LinkedIn and looking at other people's LinkedIn pages and seeing what they've written, you know, and if you find somebody has a really great LinkedIn page or you like certain aspects of it, then you can kind of emulate that because this is, it's really just, it's, it's opinion based and you're really just looking for something that's going to attract attention in a positive way. So if you're stuck, then, you know, just simply start looking around and see what some other people are doing that you like. 
the summary space. So this is one of the aspects I think of LinkedIn that makes it so much more enticing than just a resume. You know, you've got that first part there, the about section where you can tell your story in maybe a few paragraphs. Essentially, you know, what is your passion? What got you interested in this particular profession? Because your resume is just going to say, here's the degree you're getting, here's where you've worked, or here's what you've done, or here are the classes, or here are the projects. But the summary, you can you know, kind of go into the fact that ever since high school, I've had a unique you know, or profound interest in fill in the blank such and such biology computers you know numbers whatever it might be and you can tell a bit of a succinct story about what got you interested in in this particular area so that summary space is again kind of like a way to entice somebody to say well let me read more about this person and see where they've worked and see what they've done and what they're getting a degree in so that's where we get into the passion and keywords of your particular industry star statements and um so we'll look at that in a bit but star statements are basically just um, being succinct with your words because while you have space to speak in this about section you don't want to ramble on right so you want to be very specific about what the situation was what your task is what um what the action was and the end result so where did you get in the end Uploading files. You can showcase projects and relevant work. You can essentially show, again, this is where it's way far ahead of a resume, show what it is that you've worked on, links to different websites, perhaps, articles, um, any kind of documents or media, anything that um, especially can make people want to just paint a bigger picture of you and your accomplishments. Also resumes, you might want to load your resume up there and some people do that. However, other people like to customize their resumes, especially if they are going to be applying for different types of positions, they might not want to load their resume. They might want to just, just have all the information on LinkedIn and let that kind of speak for itself. Include a current job entry. So what we mean by this is much like having a photo on LinkedIn, it increases your odds of recruiters and people wanting to view your, your LinkedIn page. It's the same with a current job entry. Now, that being said, I know many of you might be in school full time and you're not working. So you might say, well, I don't have a current job entry, but you can put one in. You can essentially dummy in a job entry and say that you are, in this case, the job title would be financial an analyst in training or computer coder in training. And then you can speak about maybe you know, being at UTD or followed by a phrase like available or seeking new opportunity. So maybe you've been doing that since whatever, 20, so December of 2020 to present. You're presently in this position in your, your life. So, and that's completely legitimate. So trying to have a current job entry, something that tells us exactly what you're doing now, even if that's, you know, being a full-time student. Volunteer and side hustles. This is very important. And if we think about it, um, many students are getting similar degrees right and might have high gpas much like you so then the question becomes well how are you going to separate yourself from other people how are you going to stand out and one way is any kind of volunteer experience anything that's relevant to what you do so part-time part-time jobs anything like that it helps to show maybe that part-time job is something unrelated to the degree that you're getting but it will show that you, uh, it'll kind of paint a better picture of your character in terms of what all you're doing and how hard you're working. And even if that job is unrelated, it will show employers that you know what work is, that you know what it is to be on time for work every day and hold down this part-time job. So adding or updating your current experience essentially does create more opportunity. Also volunteering in general, 
Um, a lot of people want to see that you are more well-rounded and you have other experiences besides just school. So don't hesitate to put those on, anything that's kind of um, a little bit different. And if you needed to, of course, that's part of the reason that you know the career consultants are here to look over your experiences and kind of talk through them and see if they need to be adjusted. Requesting a LinkedIn recommendation. This is something that you'll want to kind of be strategic about, keeping them relevant. But as you can see from the examples, um, when somebody can, let's just say you ha have a professor that you're close with that would do this, or maybe a previous boss, or maybe um, your, your supervisor at your internship. So that would be great if they're willing to go on LinkedIn and make a recommendation for you. And that's where, especially, let's just say you're volunteering. I know some people who are you know, in accounting or bookkeeping or something like that. And so they assist with volunteering, maybe nonprofits and assisting in that way. Anytime that you can volunteer, the entity that you're helping is pretty grateful. So they're more apt to want to write a letter of recommendation or uh, a, rec a recommendation on LinkedIn because they're trying to essentially kind of pay you back and say thank you. Last step is in LinkedIn is making sure that your private settings are privacy settings are open to opportunity. You want recruiters to be able to see that you're visible and see that you're available. And this also helps when you start connecting with other maybe UTD students, anybody that you can connect with in your industry, especially that's going to help. It's like casting a wider net. You have more people who can potentially stumble across your page, but we definitely want to be open to that opportunity and clicking on that. So I want to switch gears now now that we have say linkedin is up and running and and we're assuming that our as a result our resume is is ready and together we're going to start the task of networking and talking about that and really networking starts very basic especially if this is something that you know maybe you're more introverted and you're uncomfortable with the idea um you're not alone in that lots of people maybe half feel exactly like you do and then there's a good percentage of people who culturally, um, they'll tell me, you know, Alan, I, this is just, this feels kind of uncomfortable culturally to be just reaching out and networking with people. Um, and I, I do understand those, those cultural struggles are real and they're very difficult. Um, I suppose the best thing I can tell you is that um, it is kind of the, it is the norm here and it is expected and I'm going to get into some reasons why it's so important. Um, but in the meantime, kind of slowly jumping in, not in the deep end and starting with friends and former colleagues and basically letting them know um, that you are looking for a new position, a new job or an internship or whatever it might be and doing so with some tact, but essentially, you know, letting people know that this is what you're doing. And what I have there is show up to the party. So what I mean by that is we have to at least attempt it, right? Whether it's um, networking on Facebook or LinkedIn or however we plan on doing it, we have to do it. It's kind of like we can't stay at home and say we never meet anybody when we've been invited to a party. So if we show up to the party, at least we have the potential to meet somebody. And that's kind of like networking. There's not a guarantee that somebody wants to network with you when you maybe send out an invitation through LinkedIn to you know, do an informational interview with somebody. They may not reply, but we won't know until we try. So we have to try, we have to show up to that party. Networking is also academic organizations. So if you're part of any student organizations, those are really powerful for a couple of reasons. One is that you can put it on your resume. And again, it makes you stand out as somebody who's really interested in their degree, so much so that you're going to go above and beyond and join a student organization. It also allows you to network with other students 
and you're around like-minded people who are interested in the same degree and hopefully the same things you are. And that, well, even though, you know, you might say, well, I, we're competing for the same internships and the same jobs. And that's true. But at the same time, you, when you start speaking with other students in these academic organizations, you can hear a bit of where they've worked or where they're going or what their plans are. And you can bounce them off of yourself to see if they're close to what you want to do. So academic organizations are really powerful. It also allows you to hear when other students are maybe struggling with something like they're, they're sending out a lot of resumes and they're having trouble getting anybody to you know take, have a job interview with them and then you realize it's not just me right it's other people as well so student organizations are really powerful any kind of professional or academic events are also really important um, if you can become a part of a professional organization um, that will, uh, again, allow you to be with like-minded people and some kind of built-in networking that can take place on top of the fact that you can also post that information on LinkedIn as well as on your resume. Then I've spoken about volunteering. Again, if you're able to volunteer, especially if you can work into your area of expertise, then people that you're helping tend to be grateful and want to help you. So um, plus there is that, you know, that positive feeling that you get from just volunteering and assisting other people. And I know it's also contingent on your ability to have that time, especially if you are really busy and already working. It may not be possible right now, but maybe in the future it is. So networking is also it's informational interviews on LinkedIn. And the way that that looks is reaching out. So once you have uh, connections, let's just say UTD alum or other professionals, especially, recruiters will, will want to speak with you, but it's not really networking in the same way. You're, you're connecting with them, but either they can assist you with a position or they can't. But an informational interview is something that is great to conduct with somebody in your industry. Maybe it's even somebody who's once you graduate, maybe they're 10, 15, 20 years ahead of you in having graduated and working in your chosen industry. Well, they can really be a wealth of information because they graduated like you did or like you're about to, but then they've gone on and they've had all these experiences and they've worked at different places doing different things and you can learn from them. So questions such as, you know, what's a day in the life like where you work? Or if you're in my shoes, what would you do? Or how did you get your start in the business? Um, who else do you, do you know of anybody else that maybe I should speak with? Because you're just trying to meet with people and gather information, especially relevant, up-to-date information about what's going on in your industry within a certain company right now as of today. Hard to get more relevant than that. So again, we can learn what's a day in the life like at where this person works. And if the day sounds bad or the job sounds bad and you leave that informational interview thinking, we're not gonna tell this, we're not gonna say this to the person, but if we leave thinking, well, that sounds terrible. I would not wanna work there. Well, we're not gonna say that, but that's still valuable information, just as valuable to know what we don't wanna do or where we don't wanna go as opposed to what we do wanna do. We might also learn general pay. So we're not asking that person by any means, well, what do you get paid? But we might be able to find out information such as, okay, do you happen to know somebody starting out a recent grad, you know, first job or internship? Do you know the pay range for those kind of positions in any companies? And they might be able to give you some information that hopefully um, lines up with the information you've already learned you know, from other networking or Glassdoor or something like that. Also, is this a good fit in general? So they're kind of hopefully in an informational interview with your questions, painting a picture for you of what, you know, what this looks like, you know, and, and do I think this is something I want to do? Is this the direction for me? The best networkers never need to look for jobs. I'm basically putting that in there because it illustrates the point. Whenever I've worked with people 
who are just expert extroverted networkers. They're the type of people who they know everyone, right? They're very connected with everybody out there. They're constantly doing lunch or dinner or taking a meeting with somebody. And those kind of people know so many people that odds are somebody's going to come to them at a, at a business lunch or something and say, hey, I know somebody you need to speak with. I think you'd be perfect. They're looking to hire somebody like you at their company. And so these type of expert networkers are just constantly networking and almost interviewing and meeting people. And so they've got contacts all over. And when the next job falls in their lap, they're able to meet about it, interview and take the job, right? That, that easy. So it's not to say that that's something anybody can do easily, because I, I, don't, I don't believe that, but it is something to kind of keep in mind that if you can get better at networking, it'll be much easier to find jobs or internships. Also, networking is not something that we do temporarily and say, oh, good, I got my internship or I got my first job or whatever. I never have to do that again. Because the truth of the matter is it keeps going. You know, we, it, ideally we do it throughout life. And even people who, you know, maybe your grandparents age, something like that, ideally they're still networking and that they're still meeting people and meeting neighbors and able to find out information, networking changes for them, but maybe who's a good dentist, who's a good doctor, who's somebody good to mow the lawn or paint the house. And they're finding out that information from their network. But in the meantime, when we're in the working years, um, we're networking all the time because we never know um, who, if we want to meet up with that person at a later point, because we're looking for new employment. So just kind of think of it in terms of this is just going to continue. LinkedIn in general, and this is kind of vague, we don't want to go overboard to the point where somebody's posting things all the time and it's just relentless, you know, multiple times a day, every day. We want to kind of look and be strategic and post some things as a reminder that we're out there and we're active, but um, that's not all we're doing so that we're not inundating everyone with, oh, here's another post from so-and-so. Also following through, if um, the plan is to start networking and connecting with people first and then networking and trying to see if you can you know, have informational interviews, if you set something up, definitely follow through and prepare for that ahead of time. You know, have some questions written out so that if, you know, if you happen to be nervous about meeting with this person, even virtually, you have some questions written down so that when you meet with them, you're, you're ready as opposed to thinking, well, now I don't know what to ask them right? Because you do have questions. You, you want to know, like I said, how they got into the industry, how long they've been doing it, what would you do if you're in my shoes, what's a day in the life like, you know, anything like that. So essentially, it's being actively and meaningfully engaged. So if you're going to, if you're going to do it, be a part of LinkedIn, then, then make it um, impactful, make it worth your while. Okay. Paul, do we have any questions in the chat? Not yet, Alan. Okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do, because we kind of, I think went through that fast, so we've got plenty of time. Um, I'm gonna show in case people are typing in some questions or formulating some thoughts. This is our career development team. So um, there's a picture of, of us, just wanted to briefly show that. And then here is a QR code. So it allows us to you know, have you go in there and give feedback about what you learned and, and what you liked about the presentation. So if you wanted to scan that, I'll give that a second. And then I'll go back to the uh, question screen and see if there are any questions. Paul, are you seeing anything in the chat? No, Alan, uh, no questions yet. Okay. <clears throat> oh, here we go. One just popped up. How can we connect with people in the most professional manner? 
as in how can we increase the chance of connecting with an individual in our industry who may not know us? Yeah, so that's a good question because it's not a guarantee, right? So I would say it's part of casting that wide net. There's not a guarantee. But if we just say something along the lines of, hi, I recently I've been looking at your LinkedIn page. Um, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I am a soon to be graduate of UTD and such and such. And I was wondering, would you be willing to meet with me virtually so I can ask you a few questions about the industry? You know, meet with you for 10 minutes to ask you some questions about the industry. You know, thank you in advance, something like that. So that's, you know, basically letting them know what it is that you're looking for um, so that you're really clear about, you know, what it is that they're going to get into. Um, yeah, I think that would probably that's going to give you the best the best chance. Paul, did you have anything to add or any thoughts surrounding that? Uh, no, I think that that that's good. Um, okay. There is a second question. Okay. Uh, if if you wish to join a company and connect and connecting with someone and plainly asking for a job is rude. Uh, I, I think they're saying if you wish to join a company and connect with someone is plainly asking for a job rude if i'm reading that correctly yeah I, I i suspect you are and yeah we don't want to do that because here's what we ideally want we're just is all we're doing is we're trying to gather information right and then what we're hoping is that the individual will say well gosh you know when you're ready for a, an internship or job send me a resume i'll give it to my boss we're always looking to hire good people Right. Um, I had a student, uh, I taught a class for a few semesters at UTD and I assigned everybody, including her, that they had to go network. By chance, it was her last semester. She was graduating. She ended up networking with a, a company, a big company that by chance she also applied for a job with. The person that she networked with happened to know the hiring manager. As a result, he said, I'll go talk to that hiring manager because he was impressed with her. Long story short, she got the job. Um, now, would she have gotten it without networking? I can't say for sure, you know, because, but what we do know is it got that resume and a good uh, word of mouth recommendation because of her networking. But to be real specific, no, you're not going to say, can you get me a job? You're not going to do that. But, but good question for sure. Alan, here's another one. Is there a way we can make our profile stand out? from similar people who are applying to similar jobs? Yeah, another good question. So um, let's just assume that, you know, you've got a photo on there and it's professional um, and you've got a lot the same degree. Then some of the things that would make you stand out would be any specific projects or links, you know, if, you, if you've designed anything. Then the biggest, besides maybe your, your catchphrase or your tagline at the front, um, the about section can make people stand out in terms of what, why are you passionate about this? Whatever that degree is, whatever it is you're doing, why this degree? Um, and of course, the answer is somewhere along the lines of this is something you've been interested in for a long time. The answer is not, well, I, I heard it's, you know, it's good job security, right? That's not the passion they're looking for. So being able to convey your interest, showing volunteer work, academic organizations, being involved in the industry as much as you can as a student, that's what's going to make you stand out compared to somebody who just is getting the degree only. Alan, here's another one. Uh, the, uh, the comment says LinkedIn says the person isn't part of our network when trying to connect to some people. So they're they're not connected. Evidently, uh, LinkedIn says the person isn't part of our network when trying to connect to some people. Hmm. So they've they see the person and they're trying to connect, but the person's not a part of their network. Correct. Uh, okay. Um. So I think what that's really saying is that you'd first have to connect with the person. 
which I think is accurate because you could find Bill Gates, right? And try for an informational interview and that's not gonna work, it's not gonna do it. I right. think you'd have to connect with him in that manner, which obviously he's not just taking anybody. Um, so I think you have to connect and then request the informational interview. Okay, Alan, here's another one. How do you start a conversation with a recruiter? Um, you know, recruiters, if we think about it, and that's a good question, their job is to place people, right? So for them, time is money. They're speaking with a lot of people, looking at a lot of resumes. They're not into fluff. So if a recruiter is reaching out to you, it's it's kind of almost a, you know, it's down to business kind of a thing. So if you if they're reaching out to you, then you just kind of start speaking, answering their questions. If you happen to know of a recruiter and you're reaching out to them, then I would be very clear as to what your background is, what your degree is, and what you're seeking. Are you able to assist with that? So that that's how I would approach a recruiter because they're at work, right? Paul, did you have any a different take on that or anything added? No, no, I, I okay. think that covers it. Uh, there's a second question that's very similar. What are the steps to take when you want to connect with the recruiter? I think you covered that. Uh, here's another one. How do we reconnect with the previous coworker through LinkedIn after a long time just to keep yeah. in touch? Okay, so yeah, that, that can be a little tricky, whether it's um, maybe it's it, it's a coworker, you know, that you do or don't have their phone number, you know, to text. Maybe it's just through LinkedIn or it's through a student that you have a phone number or an email because you worked on a project a long time ago. It's all kind of the same in that, um, you know, you're just going to basically say something along the lines of, hey, it's me, you know, essentially remember me from we work together or we're on that project. Um, just wanted to touch, touch base. I know it's been quite a while. You know, are you still working at such and such? You know, how's that going? Something like that. And then say, you know, okay, well, it's, it's trying, I'm trying to reach out to, you know, different people. And I was thinking about you. I'm, I'm, I recently graduated and I'm looking for my first position. So curious if you happen to know of anyone that I should speak with or any companies that, you know, might be good for me to consider. You know, just kind of a little back and forth casual communication like that. But I think at first, just simply reaching out and just saying, hey, it's it's me, you know, it's been a while. How are you? Kind of like that. OK, there's uh, quite a few more questions. Here's another one. How do we ask someone to be a mentor on LinkedIn? Well, a mentor, and that's always nice to have. Um, first, you're going to want to get to know them to even know that really they could be a good mentor and um i don't know that i would really ask asking to be a mentor is a bit like asking somebody for a job um so probably first you know connecting an informational interview hopefully they're very receptive to assisting um i guess i would be curious what you want mentoring about you know, um, specifics, because if there are some specifics and this person was very open to meeting with you and they say, hey, if you ever need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Well, then they're kind of becoming a mentor, right? And so then you can essentially go to them again and say, would you be willing to meet? I had some questions about. And so they're kind of developing into a mentor or they're not, but I don't really, I don't know, Paul, I'd be curious of your take, but I don't know that that's something you can just overtly ask. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's a, a relationship building. So maybe it starts with a connection and an informational interview, and then the relationship grows. But a, a mentor relationship, as I view it, is just not something that that happens once. It develops over time to, yeah. you know, to have that type of relationship. Yeah, and you know, as you're saying that, I'm thinking about it in terms of like a mentorship. It's like a friendship in a way. You wouldn't, and that's a really good question, but you wouldn't walk up to somebody and say, hey, I'm so-and-so, can we be friends? 
you're not going to say that, but you're going to get to know somebody and over time you develop a friendship. So same thing over time, you can develop that mentorship. Good here's, question. Yeah, here's another one, Alan. Uh, it says, a this is how it reads, a letter of recommendation from a user without enough information on LinkedIn be a bad thing. So I think, uh, I think, can a letter of recommendation from a user without enough information on LinkedIn, would that be a bad thing? Um, I don't think it's a bad thing because you're talking about a letter of recommendation or somebody recommending you. It's just not as great. It's kind of like in a resume whenever somebody says, uh, you know, bullet point of uh, we save the company a lot of money with the computer program we made. Well, that's kind of vague compared to we save the company, you know, twenty eight thousand dollars per year as a result. Now that's specific. So the recommendation, hopefully they have some substance in there, something more specific other than this person's wonderful because <laughs> that's not very valuable, but it's better than nothing. This one is about the experience section. They're asking, should I put, should I put up a, a brief description of the projects slash tasks that I've worked on at my previous workplace under the experience check section. Yeah, so you're talking about the projects or tasks that you had to do at that employer. Mm -hmm. Previously, like. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's 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 is what you would put, right? So you have the job, you have the job title, but then, well, what did you do? Well, I, I headed up a team of this many people and here's what we did, you know, and we developed something to increase productivity or whatever it might be so yeah you're going to talk about different projects tasks essentially what did you do there so yes okay here's another one most of the recruiters profiles are locked is there any other way to connect with the recruiter um yeah i i don't know of other ways because yeah they don't want everybody reaching out to them but recruiters again that's their job is to place people so you having a good linkedin page and having that information then they're looking around for people that that fit that profile um paul do you know of anything different along those lines as far as linking to recruiters oh um maybe um, you know, taking advantage of the services through the UCC when they host uh, virtual events or in-person events. I saw where there's several companies being, um, you know, virtually or, at, you know, coming to campus to meet students. So keeping your eye on Handshake and, uh, you know, coming to meet people either virtually or in person. Yeah, that's true. That, that's That's another avenue, I would agree. OK, here's another question. How could someone without a previous without previous job experience make their profile look strong? OK, yeah, and this comes up a lot, right? It's the whole question of how do you get a job with, without a job? You know, they say you need work experience. Well, how do I get that? So, you know, there's a few things, um, obviously the degree you're going for, right? Then there's also class projects. Then there's also um, just pre, you know, like uh, previous work experience. So it could be even working at Chick-fil-A, right? It at least shows work experience. Um, and then there's also the academic, the courses that you've taken. So some people will list out a skill section. Here are all the skills. Here's what I can do. You know, I can write, you know, I can do JavaScript or, you know, Python or whatever. Um, but then there's also the course description or the course section. People will put you know, academic courses and they'll list them. But if you really don't have a whole lot to fill up that resume with, then you can go into those courses and say, you know, courses, courses taken to date or courses, you know, academic courses, list the course and then go back to the syllabus and read it and look at the language that they use to describe what you are about to get into with that course. And the language is gonna sound pretty impressive 
and probably kind of difficult, but it's going to give you some verbiage, some ideas so that you can take those kind of ideas and put them in to uh, kind of bullet points underneath the course. So essentially what that's doing is instead of having a blank page, employers or uh, if you're going for an internship, they can at least read about the courses you've taken and what you did. Right. So there's kind of a hierarchy. You know, if you don't have the work experience, then projects. If you don't have projects, then listing out courses and specifics. OK. Here's another one. Do additional certifications from Coursera or Udemy help to make the profile strong? Yeah, so good question. Um, any kind of certification or training is is good, but it's more relevant if it applies to the profession you're going for. So if you like if you're wanting to become an accountant, right, and you get your CPA license, then that's very important. But if you are, um, and I don't know why this would happen, but if you are a CPA and then you went on to get a, a job as a, you know, com in computer science, a degree in computer science, you took a different career path, well, then that CPA license doesn't really translate. It's nice to have, but it's the person hiring you for a computer science position it doesn't really care about your cpa so it's not about the credentials it's does do the credentials match up to your area of expertise your work that you're getting into okay next question are there any sections in linkedin which we students always forget to work on or are there any hacks slash tips we should keep in mind while updating our LinkedIn profile? Mm, I don't know that I can say across the board that there are any sections people always forget. It kind of depends on the person. I, although if I was going to say anything, I think it would be disregarding the about section and thinking, well, it just matters that I put this tagline here showing my degree, my education, where I've worked. Um, and then that's just, that's good but then again that about section can really entice people to want to learn more about you because you can you can really paint a picture of who you are you're interested what your interests are and what all you bring to the table which goes beyond just you know bullet points of what you did so probably the about section is is it that you really want to make sure but you go through all the sections and you try to see do i have something i can add and if so, you know, make sure it's in there. OK, next question. Are long paragraphs about the previous job necessary to highlight your work experience? And do recruiters read such long passages? Yeah, so you're saying long paragraphs, it sound like in mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. resume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I kind of try and stay away from long paragraphs because if we think about it from the recruiter standpoint or the hiring manager, they're only spending sometimes, you know, a few seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, not long on a resume. So we're trying to make it easy. And it's easier to read a bullet point than long paragraphs, right? So if we can see a bullet point and we can kind of scan through it and decide how much of that we want to read or how much of it we want to skip to go to the next bullet point, they're just like easier to digest little bits of information whereas a paragraph is a lot of information so my opinion is uh, not to do the paragraphs but to do bullet points okay next question how helpful can a coworker be in getting me a job position um well a coworker. Um, I mean, if it's an ex coworker at a different place, then they can be extremely helpful. If it's a coworker that you work with right now, and um, if you're on an equal level in the same department, well, unless they have some clout, unless they carry some weight in that organization, maybe not much, because the person that's going to be able to help you, if at all, would be like your current manager or anybody at a higher level that can speak to your qualifications. 
So a coworker on par where you're both kind of at the same level in the same department, um, then I don't I don't think that's going to do a whole lot. OK, next, where can I find the UTD Career Center on campus? OK, so we are located in the SSB building. Um, you know, right down the middle of campus, there's that long I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's the water feature that goes all the way down. And um, kind of I'm try, having trouble trying to explain where we are. We're centrally located. We're right to the west of that water feature. We are south of the um, the plinth in that area. We are just north of I think it's that academic not academic, but the Paul, do you recall what it's called where you can go to the gym? Where you can, center. Activity center. There's the word. Thank you. So north of the activity center, um, we are um, just slightly north and west of JSON. And we are south of um, what is it? The student student union. So SSB, you could just look it up online. That would be the best way to see a map. But also considering that we also do a, a good share, a good amount of virtual appointments at this time, and we have for the last year and a half. OK. What would be a good way to word the about section and how long or detailed should it generally be? OK, so uh, we put in here, we say, you know, maybe three paragraphs, five paragraphs. It could be one paragraph. It's quality over quantity. And the types of things that you would say, it's going to vary from person to person, but you'd look at your, you know, kind of big picture. You're not, you're thinking about what to put in the about section first. You're thinking about who are you and what direction are you going in your life? What is your area of expertise? What are you developing an expertise in? Um, how did you develop those interests? What do you bring to the table? You know, what is your passion? So it's kind of starts with big questions like that. And that's where sometimes people will, you know, if let's just say they're planning on, it doesn't really matter what they're, they're planning on. They're looking to become uh, an accountant or, or a mathematician of some sort. And they speak about the fact that, you know, dating back to junior high or high school, they always had a knack for numbers. And while other people found it difficult, there was something that you always excelled in. And, and you always loved the thrill of coming up with the right you know, answer for a mathematical question. And um, so you just kind of go into a little bit of an explanation about it if you wanted to do that, or just simply you know, more succinctly your, your goals and what interests you and the direction you plan on going with your career. So it's kind of case by case. And there again, if you can find some other people who have great LinkedIn profiles and you read what they have, you can use that as inspiration for the direction you want to go. OK, next one. Does plainly attaching a resume while interacting with a interacting with a recruiter help in landing a job or is it considered rude? Um, so plainly attaching. Um, I think you mean just somehow you've got the recruiter's uh, email address. Or you have some way of just simply saying, here's my resume. Um, yeah, I think we kind of want to preface it with something along the lines of, you know, hey, here's who I am. I'd really be um, appreciative if, if you'd be willing to review my resume, you know, something like that, something a little bit personal because you're kind of asking a favor, like here's my resume. So I think that's that's probably better than just, you know, here's my resume. Paul, did you have any thoughts on that? No, uh, I, I totally agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this looks like it is our last question at the moment. Do do recommendations count over endorsements? Do recommendations count over endorsements? Um, 
I guess I'm having trouble thinking what the difference is, a recommendation and endorsement. Paul, do you know the difference? Are they broken in two sections in LinkedIn? I guess maybe, uh, well, they could be. Uh, um, perhaps maybe the value of a, uh, a letter of recommendation versus oh, okay. an endorsement, maybe. Okay. I, I guess I see, yeah, like an, an endorsement then on LinkedIn is kind of brief. A letter of recommendation. Uh, if I'm thinking of it that way, it's more formal, and that might carry more weight in that it took more effort for that letter of recommendation. You know, somebody had to agree to write a letter for you. I suppose that was maybe it's maybe thought of as an older way of doing it, but I still think it sh probably shows more effort. But anytime anybody can say specifically, this is a quality individual and here's why. Then, then great, you, you take it. Okay. Um, we did have a follow up about the coworker question. The student said, Oh, I meant how helpful is a worker I know who works at a company I'm applying to in getting me a job or an internship there? So they already work at a company that you want to work for. Is that the case? Yeah, it appears who works at a company I am applying to. Um, yeah, no, that can be very valuable because let's just say that that employee is a really good employee and that hiring that that manager is looking to hire other people. Well, then that manager is getting they've posted a job and they're getting all kinds of people applying and they don't know one person from another. It's like looking at this um, this group of people in the chat. You don't know their names, right? But that hiring manager really is appreciative and, and loves it if they have a good employee who says, hey, here's a friend of mine. They're great at such and such. They're, they're, they wanted to apply, right? That hiring manager will entertain that idea for sure because it's coming from a good, reliable source. Now, if that hiring manager, you know, doesn't think highly of that employee that's recommending you, well, then that's not going to speak well. But yeah, a, a contact at a company, that's that's networking. So that's really valuable. OK, there, there is one more that came in uh, and maybe we'll wrap it up with this. Um, does connecting directly with an employer form? Uh, does connecting directly with an employer from a company overpower the process of applying through the application portal for jobs, comma, internships? How can you read that maybe again? Yeah, does connecting directly with an employer from a company overpower the process of applying through the application portal for jobs and internships? I guess I'm not sure what we mean by overpower. Um, so it sounds like you're applying, you know, which is better, maybe applying through the portal or apply or trying to, you know, speak with an employee there. Um, if you have a relationship with that employee that works there, that's valuable. Um, but you're still going to have to apply online normally so that they can have your information. But then if you have somebody that literally, you know, they they can vouch for you and go to the hiring manager or the recruiter, then that's that's very valuable. So I hope I'm answering that right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the relationships certainly assist uh, yeah. to help you get to <laughs> apply and perhaps your right. application is um, looked at more closely because of your relationship. Alan, there's one question I think that wraps it up here. They're asking if these presentation, um, presentation slides uh, will be shared with the attendees. And that's our last question. Um, I don't know that we sh share them. Um, I don't believe we do that, but we are going to, we end up posting these um, on our YouTube channel. And so you'd be able to go and view them there. And then you can you know, rewatch them, pause it, whatnot. Okay, thank you, Alan. This uh, that was the last question we have.